In this tutorial, we're going to be going over a button called Sequencing in the Fitting Simulator Workbench. So in a previous blog post, we covered tracks, which are the actual motions. So here we're going to be combining those motions with a sequence. I have a, a sub-assembly inside of a larger assembly with several fasteners. I've done a lot of the legwork already by creating the tracks. That's what those little lines are. So one of the things that I have going on is the fact that I have some fasteners on either end of this bracket. And I want to be able to move these items a bit faster. So the fastest way of doing this is to create a shuttle. A shuttle is basically a method of moving a bunch of parts together as one. Let's create a shuttle together. So we're going to create a shuttle for the left side nuts. To begin, you're going to click on the shuttle command. And then in the dialog box for the shuttle, it really just needs to know a name and then the items that you want to move together. So going into your model, you're going to select on, and you don't have to hold down the control key here, you're simply going to select on the items that you want to move together and then give it a meaningful descriptive name. So here I am selecting on my four fasteners on the left hand side of my assembly, giving it a meaningful descriptive name, and then of course clicking OK. Now that we have that established, let's define a track for it. We do have a blog post that goes over in greater detail the track command, but essentially the track command is just how you are to move the item. For this, I'm going to keep it really simple. I just want to essentially slide my fasteners over to the right. I can establish how long I want that to take within the dialog box, so maybe five seconds. And then to tell it to move, I'm going to use the compass, slide it over, and then insert my first shot. That will establish the track, and then it will also kind of store it here in the tree. So I have all of my tracks created. The next thing that I want to do is to tell certain things to be hidden. It's very common when you're doing this for in very large assemblies with small fasteners. It's like after I kind of show them being assembled or disassembled, I just want to tell them to then be hidden. You're going to do this with the visibility action command. And I'm just clicking on the button and then clicking on the fasteners to tell it to be hidden. In the end, that means I'm going to be left with 16 different visibility actions for my four different bolts and nuts on both sides of my assembly. So we're going to now that we have all of our actions created go into the actual sequencing. Right, so this is where you're telling Katia, have this happen first, have this happen second, maybe have this thing happen simultaneously. In the dialog box, it will display on the left-hand side all of your actions that you have created. So the tracks or the visibility actions. And you really just have to click on them and then send them over to the right-hand side. And that is going to be underneath of where it says action and sequence. So the first thing that I want to do is to take care of the sub-assembly. That sub-assembly, I want to just kind of pull it out, but it's constrained with those little parts. So I'm going to take the retaining pin out first. So I'll click on the retaining pin track and simply send it over to the right. So that is step number one in my sequence of disassembling this entire item. Then, with the retaining pin out of the way, I can remove the physical pin. So that's now step number two. Moving on, I'm going to tell the subassembly to completely slide out as step number three. And then once the subassembly has slid out, maybe I want to tell those to be um, even broken out. So I'm going to first tell the nut, which is at the bottom, to be step number four. But there's two other parts there. There's the ball fixture that you're seeing kind of on the top, and there's also a small washer underneath. So I would like the ball fixture to slide up and the washer to slide down at the same time, simultaneous. To get this simultaneous 
uh, thing to occur, all you have to do is remember the control key. The control key in that very first mode is going to allow the two items to happen simultaneous. So I'm holding down the control key on my keyboard, I'm grabbing those two items, and it, if you notice, when I send them to the right, they both appear as step number five. So with step number five established, let's take a look at what this kind of plays through. So we'll rewind to the beginning and play through it quickly here, maybe to just double check that everything's still working. So you can see how the sequence is according to my plan. The retaining pin flies out, the pin flies out, my subassembly pulls out, and then it itself kind of disassembles. So let's play through that once more. All right, so perfect. It's, it's ending up exactly the way I want it, so we'll just finish up here with our sequence. To begin, let's focus on the right-hand side bracket, which does have a lot of fasteners. So with this bracket, we first want to simulate that the fasteners are coming out. So we're going to start off with the nuts on the backhand side. I'll have those to be removed, and then we'll also tell them to be hidden right after that. So to begin, I'm going to go find my track in the left-hand side of my dialog box. And that track is going to be for the bolts on the right. Or I'm sorry, the nuts on the right. And then I'll send that over to the right-hand side. So that now shows up as step number six in our sequence. After they complete and it slides out, I want to tell them to be hidden. So if I, in my list, scroll down, I see my 16 different visibility actions. And those ended up being um, like the second kind of grouping that I clicked on. So those were visibility actions 5 through 8. So once again, I am going to hold down the control key, or you can also use the shift key, right? If you grab the first one, hold down the shift key, grab the last one, it kind of highlights all the ones in the middle. But the important thing is I have them all highlighted. Then I send them over to the right, and notice how they are all supposed to happen simultaneously to each other. All right, so we've got the uh, nuts taken care of on the back side. Let's take a look at see as long as they all kind of act according to plan and you can see how the it did fly out and disappear. So we're good to go there. Moving on to our bolts. We are first going to have the bolts to fly out. All right, send it over to the right with that track. And then let's tell it to be hidden. So these are visibility actions one through four. Again, Holding down the control key or the shift key, they're all highlighted. They all take place as one single item. Now, moving on to the dialog box at the bottom, there's these couple different of modes that we have. The second mode is called Add in Last Step. This means that whatever it is that I've clicked on is going to automatically be automatically be nestled and tied to a simultaneous action of the last step. So in this case, if I use this middle option, add in last step, and do that with my bracket, because that's the last thing that I have to move out, I find my bracket track and then send it over. You can see how that's all kind of supposed to happen at the same time with that option uh, clicked on. So if I don't want that, then there is a way that I can fix it. There's a merge up and down or a move up and down. In this case, I want to hit move down because move down knows that it needs to be its own independent step. So you can see it went from happening simultaneously in step 9 to happening by itself in step 10. So again, you've got the two choices at the bottom. My personal favorite is that first one, create last step and add. All right, over to the left hand side, we're about done here. We're going to first move our nuts out with a track. And then we want those to be hidden. So we'll go find those in their visibility action list. Those are the last four that I created. And then again, we can send those all over simultaneously to the right hand side. Now, because we've covered the first two, but we haven't covered the last one, let's go ahead and do that one now. So if I have all four of those highlighted, choose the last type, iterative create last step and add, and send it over to the right. Notice the difference. It doesn't know 
to put them all in the same simultaneous step. It actually separates them out individually. So I would have uh, one bolt hidden and then the next one and the next one, the next one. So if I don't want that to happen, if I want them to all take place simultaneously, then I would click on it and say merge up. So merge up combines it into the last step. So, you know, it doesn't really matter truly which one of these three types that you use because you can always end up kind of fixing it with the move up, down, or merge up and down, but I like the first one. The last thing that we have to do is just tell the bolts to be removed and then be hidden. So same method as before, All right, holding down the control key, sending it over. And then finally, we will just have the left bracket to be removed. So in total, this was 15 different disassembly steps that we have sequenced together to create a nice little motion file of this disassembly of this very large product. I'm going to click on the parameters here just to slow down the sampling step because otherwise it would be a little too quick. And then finally, we'll hit play. So again, so pins are removed, subassembly kind of flies out and separates, fasteners fly out and disappear, and then flyouts disappear on the second side, and then our brackets kind of separate. So again, this is all done with the help of the sequence button in the fitting simulator workbench. It tells Katia which actions to take place when. You can create as many sequences as you need and they do store themselves in the applications branch of your tree of your product file. Just like all of the other things that we create in the fitting simulator, it's in the applications branch.